Hi everyone, my name is AFM Justin Rishworth. Um, I'm an Arena Federation Master. I've, I was in, I'm currently ranked 10th in Citibank Chess Union in Gauteng region. I reside in Jeffreys Bay, and I'm one of, the, and I'm one of the new coaches on the block. And today I want to talk to any chess member, whether you are. A beginner chess player, intermediate chess player, advanced chess player, if you um, a chess parent that's supporting your ch children, which just for the record in Jeffrey's by itself, I think it's fantastic. I think it's been, I think you're giving your children fantastic support. Now, if you're a youngster and you're watching this, I want to give you some advice. Those that know me from the Jeffrey's Bay Chess Club, I've played many events by you guys and I've won many tournaments um one of the higher rated players in Jeffrey's band so my advice how many times have you ever wondered what how does a strong player really prepare for the upcoming tournament what does he do what's the secret behind Magnus Carlsen doing very well what's the secret behind my preparations and let's start so for some players you would have played you would have either played your first tournament or in your first year of playing chess or you've been playing for some time but there were some questions that you had in your mind that you haven't really been able to figure out so hopefully this video gives me gives you some answers to these questions. And if you are an intermediate player or a top player in Sarah Bartman district or in the Jeffers Bay Chess Club, please listen to what I'm saying and watch what I'm saying so that this can be beneficial for you also. I'm sure it will be beneficial for some chess player in this region. Now, when we start preparing, the first things first we need to remember that we need to have fun. You cannot play chess, whether it's for fun or for serious, without having fun and enjoying the game. Um, what many of us do not like is losing. But when we lose, we need to learn from our mistakes. That's why we notate and we write down our moves and we learn from it. We go to our coaches or our mentors, or school teachers, and we asked him, can you help me go through this game with, uh, with me? And you go through them. And at any point, I'm happy to, to assist. Uh, I'll be shortly giving my coaching rates, as in prices and everything, which is reasonable, and I'm quite certain someone out there would be listening to this. That's interested. Now we analyze our games, and we and it's not just when we lose, when we win, when we lose, when we draw. Any result, we analyze it because it's important to understand our strengths and weaknesses. For many of you that know, and I've played some top grandmasters in my lifetime, and. Before I can play against them, even myself, I have to know my strengths and weaknesses. I need to know that I can play that play a certain way. And for the beginners, you might not know yet what your strengths and weaknesses is, and that's okay. That's why we go back to the very first one. You need to have fun. Without fun... You cannot grow. And the more you play, the better you get. When we play, you without you knowing, you learn different traits. When I mean traits, you learn more about yourself. When you lose, if you're a beginner and you're losing, I recommend that you do not resign. Why? So that you can see how you being checkmated. Why do I say this? 
so that you can start learning different checkmate patterns. And eventually, when you when you improve your game, you get to you get to use that exact checkmate pattern that was used against you. You can use it against your opponent, because I can promise you, it will occur. It will occur. You will be confronted with checkmate positionings where you get to checkmate your opponent. It will happen. Now. How does it how does a top player prepare for a tournament? First of all, we need to be well rested before any game. So the night before, we go to bed early and we get enough sleep. Second of all, we try not to burn our energy. So in other words, have fun when you're playing a tournament, have fun with your friends, have fun with those around you. But it's not always a clever idea to play soccer in between your games. Although you must have fun. But when having fun, you must also try. And if you're going to play soccer for 10 minutes and the break is 20 minutes, play 10 minutes of soccer and give yourself 10 minutes rest so that you can regroup. Next. When we prepare, we look at our strengths and weaknesses, but your opponents also. The top players, we collect games from a database. And we work out the strengths and weaknesses of our opponent. Very often than not, you play the same person again, especially in, in the tournaments in Sheffield's Bay or the Sarah Bartman region. You play the opponent up. Many times. And I'm sure when you play your opponent, if you played him five times, I'm pretty sure you would have figured it out what's his strengths and weaknesses. You might have, have lost all five times against him, but maybe maybe you've realized that you win a rook, you win a knight, you win a bishop. He gives his queen too early. He plays his queen too, too early in the opening. And that's good. The fact that you can identify it means that there's a chance of getting progress. And if you're not noticing it now, let me give you some beginner tips if you're a beginner watching this. So, in the beginning, when you start again, and I'm going to change the camera so I can show you the board. When you start, number one, Occupy the center by having w at least one pawn in the center, but ideally you have two pawns in the center. Watch. So here's the board. So what I would, you, this is the center. So ideally you would like this. If you can maintain that with your pawns, Without ru ruining it and without losing it, it would look very good for you. By saying that, black or your opposite color does not want you to have the bigger space. Or he doesn't want both your pawns in the center because it would be bad for your opponent, whether you're playing as white or black. So typically, black will play this. So... Now we got a pawn in the center. What do we do then? We put a knight towards the center of the pawn. We're attacking this pawn here. And what black does, he brings his knight also in the center, but he's protecting that pawn. Okay? You got to protect your pieces. Now, there's many ways of going about this, but if you're a beginner watching this, if, then I feel this is the best way to learn. And if you're doing, if you're doing club, I'm going to request the club officials to, to request that you practice just this way. If you're an intermediate player or an advanced player, I recommend then you play what you know. 
because there's a reason why you got to the level that you are. But if you're not over a thousand rated player, then I suggest try this way. So next thing I bring you bring out both knights in the board. Knights before bishop. It's just very easier. And then if sometimes black does the same. Then we bring out our light square bishop, or the bishop the closest to the king. Notice how my bishop is in the center there. Everything is pointing towards the center. Black will do the same. Why? And then the next tip, and that answers why, so that we can castle early. Before we can attack... I want to know that my king is safe. So if my king is safe, I can attack. I can play chess. Okay? And then we activate last pawn. Notice we got a we got a pawn chain, which I'll send a video later on. Notice you've got a pawn chain and our bishops are free. None of our pieces are sitting stuck. If you're a beginner watching this, do you see how my pieces are happy and working together? They're happy because they can they can do any they can go anywhere where they want to. I can put my knight in the center like this if I wanted to. I can but first, we need to activate our last bishop, but this is just ideas, which you can do. So, some might play bishop to d2, which is in front of the queen. Or, your more senior guys might play bishop g5, pinning the knight. Presuming black does the same. And then, we develop the queen. Do not... Do not copy necessarily what I'm doing because every position is going to change. But use this as a baseline of what I'm trying to say with the opening principles. So I move my queen. Now do you see my pieces? My pawn's got a pawn structure. I've got a pawn occupying the center. I've got my King in safety, which is castled, which is priority number one. My, my rooks are connected, so they're both working together. And all my pieces are doing something. None of my pieces are sitting back and doing nothing. What have we learned in this video? If you're a beginner, we need to activate our pieces. We need to control the center. We need to castle early so that we can keep our king safe. And we need to make sure that all our pieces are in the best possible square in the beginning. Because when you're opening, whatever opening you play, so if you're intermediate and a, C and a top player watching this, whatever opening you play, if you can get your pieces out and they're working in harmony, then that gives you an advantage in, in the middle game. That's where the battlefield starts. I don't know about you, but I would like to have an advantage against my opponent. And sometimes the advantage might be equal, as in he can have the same. But if he's negligent and he misses, misses out of one of his principles, and if you follow what I'm saying, you might be better than him. And you, your position might look a lot more promising, as in there's a lot more promise. And if you're a top player or intermediate player watching this, not saying that you do not know this, but maybe this is a good um, to refresh your memory. So, in preparations, we make sure that whatever openings we want to play. And parents, if your if your if your children is still new to chess, and they speak to you about. They want to employ different openings. Uh, that's me. Otherwise, how they want to start the games. Please, it doesn't matter what they play. Make sure that you're following 
the principle. When you're following the principles, you, it makes any opening easier to play before we even go into the technicalities. And before going into the technicalities of openings, I, I suggest that you get yourself a coach or a mentor that can actually teach that. But in case that you cannot afford a coach, or in case that you're stuck without one, follow the basics. If you follow the... That's what, my opinion, that's what separates the great players to the average players. Great players understand the basics better than anybody. That is why Magnus Carlsen is doing as great and being this top world champion that we all admire. It's a lot to do because he understands the basics better than anybody. Because he knows his basics, as in he understands his openings very well, he understands his middle games very well, his end games very well, he gets enough sleep before his game, he makes sure he makes sure that he doesn't tire himself out unnecessary. He and that's why he does so well. And that's why I encourage the youngsters watching this. That you try the same. Again, when you're a youngster, you need to have fun. You need to enjoy your time. Parents, you know, tournaments can sometimes cost a lot of money. So it's important that your child, uh, it's worth your money. You're seeing them enjoy themselves, win or lose. They're laughing. They're seeing their school friends or they're making new friends. It's always good. But those that want to be competitive... Again, follow the basics. And in our preparation, we all make sure that we know our basics. When we know our basics, it makes our preparations easy. And when we're preparing for our opponents, the first thing we ask ourselves, is he following the principles? And a very important principle I have not mentioned here, and you would notice, do not bring your queen out too early. Because if you bring your queen out too early, it means it will be attacked. If it's being attacked, you're wasting time in developing, as I showed you in the video. So if your opponent brings his queen out in move four, follow what I'm telling you. Develop your pieces. And you actually, your preparation would be already a lot better. Why? Because you're understanding your basics. If you're a senior, or intermediate player, you you already grasp information about your opponent. Remember, sometimes you talk to each other, but my recommendation is don't always listen to what others say, because sometimes I can tell you a story. Sometimes you play an opponent and you go, but Johnny Ward told me he plays like this. And when I got to the board, he didn't play like this. So you set yourself up of being surprised. Rather get your own sources. But your coach, most of the time, he will tell you because he knows you best. But if you're not with a coach, get your own info. Go watch your opponent. If he's playing on board three, go watch him. Watch what he does. Maybe... I don't recommend taking photo of his notation pad or disturbing him because that's actually frowned upon and that's not fair to your fellow opponents or those that's playing the tournament with you. But, but look what he does. Sometimes you see his queen is out way too early. Sometimes you see his, his knight is stuck. So maybe he doesn't like maybe he doesn't like. Um, Maybe he doesn't like his position to be closed. Maybe he wants it open where he can play his tactics. And tactics we will speak on another stage. Is, is, is like forks, pins and skewers. Um, he, so some, some players, if they will try and play a closed game. So there's no tactics. So they're going based on theory, which is based on book. And some players like to try and make the position open where it's based on, on tactical knowledge. And... Top players looks at that. But if you're a beginner, do not worry about that now. 
just play your chess, enjoy, and give your best every game. And remember, and to conclude, remember why we're doing this. We do this for the love of the game. If you love the game, the game will love you back. I promise you. Um, and for and just an additional knowledge, sometimes there's a saying that goes, ah, but you were just lucky. Ah, you beat me by luck. Remember, luck will always favor the better player. And maybe he is lucky. Maybe you were better the whole game through. And maybe you, maybe your opponent was lucky. Remember, the more you practice, the luckier you get. That's the quote, quotation of, of Gary Player, who was a pro golf. And he used to say that. And I'll repeat the more you practice, the, the more luckier that you get. Now, as you create your own luck. But again, give your best and practice. F thank you for watching this video. And I hope this helps whoever's watching this. Parents, school teachers, the region. I, I really hope... This will help the development of the region. And I'll see you all very, very soon.